We need to think deeply about God in our shallow world. We live in a shallow world, a distracted world as I call it. And meditation, or some of your Bibles, uh, if you look at verse 15 of 1 Timothy 4, it might say take pains with, or, or they're all different ways. But the, the base word underneath that is described as the, the mind digesting what it takes in. So meditation is taking pains or, or being absorbed by or, or getting into what we've taken into our mind. What we take into our minds, we process by meditation. And so meditation is learning to think deeply about something. Meditation is, is, is chewing through, digesting what it is that we've, we've taken in. There's a terrible spiritual condition that that just is rampant in the church. One is biblical anorexia. That means that that people have no hunger for the Bible. The other is biblical bulimia. That means that they lose all of it before they even leave the building. In other words, it's just, it's gone. They they just, they're gone. They They don't even remember what the sermon is about. Now, it's okay when you're four. Because every week I I do this. This is my habit with my kids. I say, what would you learn in Sunday school? It's so sweet to hear a four-year-old say, I don't remember. But it was good. You know, and that's okay when you're four. It's horrible when you're 40 or 24 or 34 or 14. And that's bulimia, where you just eject it from your mind, and you don't even let it take root and meditate on it. Well, when meditation is going on, we take God's Word, we examine it, we turn it over and over in our minds, and that's the way we properly nourish ourselves And the scriptures tell us, because we're surrounded by confusing voices and twisted pathways that that kind of lay out before us, and we're not sure which one to take, and because there are so many voices coming and so many paths before us and so many lives that are in confusion and traveling fast, God says, I have a cure for you. And it's right here. It's just in this this sequence. Uh, he starts earlier in verse 7 of 1 Timothy 4. Reject profane and old wise fables. Exercise yourselves toward godliness. Discipline yourself. And that's how we got to Psalm 119. And then he goes down. He says in verse 12, he says, be an example. Verse 13, give attention. You see, he says, I want you. All of those are, are the concept of, of getting your mind focused on one thing. And doing something about it. So Paul instructs Timothy to devote himself completely to Christ. He gives him a simple list of items to follow. They start back in verse 7. He says, exercise yourself toward godliness. Then he's to command and teach the truth. In verse 12, he's to be an example. In verse 15, he's to meditate. Paul says, think deeply on what I've told you. Digest it. Apply it to your life. In fact, in the New Testament world, the word that Paul chose for what's in uh, the Bible, meditate or take pains with, carries the idea of, listen, being in something. In fact, what's interesting, it, this word it uses the idea of being absorbed by something or being submerged in something. I, I was thinking about that when I was sitting. We had a little spill that, that children are so full of illustrations. You know, They spilled something, and so what do you do? You put your napkin over by where the little spill is. And if you put a napkin near liquid... The liquid is drawn to the napkin. It just goes like that. You know, just you can just I love watching it just goes right up the napkin. And you know what? That's the idea of the word filled life. You and I should allow our lives to get in contact with the word and to be capillated and drawn up into our lives, like the, the spill goes up into the napkin. That's what he's saying. He's saying, Timothy, let it in. He says, give yourself totally to absorbing. Like a napkin absorbing water, it's hard to keep them apart. The napkin draws the water to itself, and the believer is to draw the word into his life. And what we meditate on controls us. What we meditate on dominates us. One way to look on meditation is to think of all the applications to life that a certain verse could have for us. And I challenge you this morning to start doing that for yourself. You look at this verse and you say, I mean, for example, um, verse 12, let no man despise youth, but be an example to the believers in word. And you start saying, how could that apply to me? Do I ever say things I wish I hadn't said? Do I ever look back and say, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't spoken so quickly. I wish I hadn't, you know, and you start applying that. Say, okay, 
I want to, as the scriptures say, set a watch at the door of my mouth. See, that's right there. What I'm doing right now, out loud, is meditation. I'm taking a word from the scriptures, allowing that word into my mind, and applying it to my life. And I'm thinking of all the ways that that scripture could apply to me. That is meditation. That is thinking deeply. You think deeply about what a verse implies and what our response should be to God. And then we think of every possible application that scripture could have in my life. And when we do that, we're meditating. Now, all of you that are students, I've had students in my home for a long time. And, and I was just looking at Elizabeth, and I have you know 14 more years of her. So, I mean, we're going to have uh, about... I don't know how many years I haven't. I don't want to think about that. It'll wear me out thinking about how many years we've been having students that are learning. But think about what would you think, say, of a computer class that you went to that had no computers for you to work on? Would you feel cheated if you went to a computer class and never touched a mouse, never felt a keyboard, never saw a monitor, never actually interacted with a computer? Wouldn't you feel cheated? How about an aviation class that you went to and you never saw an airplane, you never went to an airport, you never took a flight. You never did anything to do with airplanes. Would you feel cheated about an aviation class? Well, don't you feel cheated if you go into this book and you never experience what it's talking about? Now, the experiencing is up to you. That's what the word-filled life is all about. You've got to get your napkin near the water, and you've got to let it come up into your life and start affecting you. And that choice is studying the Bible, reading it, and, and applying it. Meditation applies it to my life. The word applied to my life, lived out. Now, if you've ever succeeded at anything, you understand what meditation takes. Anyone who succeeds at anything, learn to completely focus on that one thing. How about riding a bicycle? I mean, uh, this, how many children in a row have I... The day they take their training wheels off, you know, and dad holds on to the back of the seat and they're like this, you know, and they've got their, and they can't keep their feet on the pedals. And I'm saying, just keep your feet on the pedals. You won't fall over. I'm going to hold the back of your seat. And so pretty soon they keep both hands on the handlebars and they keep both feet on the pedals and they start feeling the pedals. And all of a sudden they don't feel like they're going to tip over. And you just keep holding the back of that seat. And usually I just go in a circle with them. And find, I keep my hand there, but I'm really not holding on. And finally I just pull my hand back. And you should see they go, and then they crash, you know, because they, <laughs> they weren't watching where they were driving. That's the second lesson, watch where you're driving, you know. But, but it's the idea that, that finally they totally focused on holding on and pedaling. And they did it. Before, they were worried about falling, and they were looking at the cement, and they were looking at whatever. And, and if you've ever succeeded in anything in life, you've learned to completely focus in, in anything, in sports, in business. You, you learn to fully concentrate. Well, this morning, God wants us to succeed. God wants us to achieve the maximum life possible on earth. And to do that, we have to stay focused in spite of the distractions.